And that's why all this is here. Because I even said to her, I don't care anymore. I'm selling my story, the one you don't want me to talk about, I'm selling it to the highest bidder. The people are going to know what you did. But the one thing I didn't say, and this is what I'm going to tell you here, is I'm not doing this for revenge. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. In fact, I know this will change a lot. Because everybody's, everybody's very big, up, big on everybody saying, you need to take responsibility for your, for your actions and what you do and all this. Well, hello. Maybe it's time the government took some responsibility. Maybe it's time for them. Big on saying it to other people take responsibility. Now I want to see you take responsibility. But I'm not doing this out of hate or nothing like that. Because I know, even today, the thing that I went through back there, people are still going through it today. And we went for a whole court battle. Nobody knew my name. My name was totally scrubbed out. So was my ex-wife's, so, so was my daughter's. Totally scrubbed out. Daily Mail had this, The Sun had this, The News of the World had this. But our names were hidden. And I'll tell you the reason why our names were hidden. It was so no one could find out what they did. That's why our names were hidden. Because while we were not room, we couldn't say nothing. So if we can't say nothing, the world's never going to know. And they carry on getting away with it. But the thing is, is they lost the court battle. They lost this court battle. The judge found them wrong and neg negligent. That's the word. They found them wrong and negligent what they did. But because our mouths were gap, nothing we could say. So what this also allowed was for another court court case to go on, which was not even a court. I went to this place where they were going to get trialled, where they were up in front of a judge, which it wasn't a, even a courthouse, you must know this. It was in the, in the city of London, and it was not a courthouse. It was a bloody business place. And I sat there and watched these people being tried for what they did to my daughter. Not me, forget me, what they did to my daughter. And then I sat there and watched them find these people not guilty. But hold up, the Royal Courts of Justice just found that they are. Now there's this this judge is finding them not. But guess what this judge was? He was their own judge. He was their judge. They had their own judges for themselves. But of course they're going to get let off. Come on. So they walked right free. And I, I remember that day because the, my father-in-law was there, my mother-in-law um, and myself. And when they found these people not guilty, free to go, free to go do it again. And the judge says, or, or the husher says, everybody rise. And I was like, what? I just, I just stayed right down there in my chair. There was no way I was raising for that. You don't tell me to stand up for people like this. When you're not when you're not doing what's right here. And there's people saying to me, Can't stand up. No. Fuck that judge. I, I know my language is a bit wasping, but I'm just accessing that time frame. So so you kind of get aware of why why I'm using this language and why I'm accessing these kind of emotions at this point is because I'm accessing those memories, that's all. So these people, you know, they was freed and had to go do it again. And guess what? They did do it again. But they didn't, I'm not talking about they went ahead and did it to other people. Yeah, of course they do, did that. But they went and did it to us again. Because they were allowed to. They were allowed to. And these people didn't, what actually, what... Judge McFarlane, I can say his name because he's publicly known about all of this. He told them to support the family and rebuilding them. Rebuilding them. They didn't. They didn't give no support. They made sure they didn't. And because they, they weren't giving it, our family just kept falling down and down 
They were just watching us destroy. She was she was eight years old. She might have even been six at the time. It's all <clears throat> you know, and this is this is all after my first daughter, and that's where it really began. That's where it really began. And I'll tell you how it began. It's because when my first daughter died, you know, there was a lot of blame going on. I was blaming them. And it was natural. I weren't aware of the things I am today, you know. So I was blaming. I was just like everybody else, blaming everybody. It's your fault, your fault, your fault. But never looking at me. And that's why you'll find in my book, you'll hear me take responsibility for that. You know, there was a part I did play, which I can I can look at and say, hmm, you know, I can see where this kind of came from. So where we was blaming them, we was blaming them because they weren't owning up. There were some things they didn't do that day, and they weren't owning up to it. If they would have said to us, oh, we made a mistake, we should have done this, but we didn't, oh, sorry, that would have been perfect. There would have been no need for the next step that we took, and the next step we took is we sued them. And that was it, that was our biggest mistake. We sued them, and they didn't like it. And that's when they bid their time, that's when... The next thing that happened, you know. Oh, you're going to sue us. We'll get you. We'll get you sooner or later. And they did. We got my daughter, my second daughter. <clears throat> I see her destroyed. I see her tearing her arms apart with knives. I see her doing that because of what she was being put through with these people. And I'll give you one instance. She's one of the people, they, they call them guardians. And... Uh, she, she takes her out one day, and this is my daughter telling me, is that she wasn't teaching her to wear a seatbelt in the car. She's eight years old at that point. Yeah, they won't teach her. It didn't matter. And a cop car pulled her up, and she made some lie about blaming on my daughter why she didn't want to have a seatbelt on her. And all of this, you know, they both didn't. So. But that, that, that's a guardian, you know, that's a guardian. Someone who's supposed to be responsible for them, you know, for what they, for looking after the, these children. I mean, there's so much that I, so much about all of this, all the, the things that they were doing, but they, they were pointing the finger at us, but we, were, we, we had done something when, when they were doing so much, you know. My daughter, when she, before all of this happened, I remember saying to her one day, I was round, round the table with, um, with her and her granddad, and we, me and her granddad used to just talk about life and reality and just the way things could change and stuff like this. And she said to she came up to us one day and she said, Dad, I know how to solve the hunger problem on this planet. And I was like, what? You know, and that solves all it is. And, um, and she said, these, these shop, shopping malls and all of that, the Tesco, the Asda's, the same with all of them, they all throw their food away. And this food is not bad. There's nothing wrong with it. She said, some of, the, some of the, the boxes are just damaged, but they're not selling them. Or they've just gone out of date, or they're just about to go out of date. So what they do is they just grab all this food and throw it in a big dumper. And, she, and I was like, amazed that someone of this age was clued up to everything that was going on around her <clears throat> and she could see because she knew she, she, I mean, she just kind of seen this stuff she could see well, all of these supermarkets all doing the same thing if they all just collected all of that food and then took it out to third world countries or something like that and that was her solution to solving a hunger problem and I was like oh wow you know she was just so intelligent at such a young age, and then they came in and did this to her. They destroyed her, totally destroyed her. I mean, in the end, for all of this, they, they got her believing that there was something wrong with her. You know, she started to, started to cover her nose up, and then they started to give her a label before, for it, because she, she didn't like what she was seeing in the mirror. There was nothing wrong with her, not in my eyes, you know. But she saw something that won there. 
And this was all due to what they were doing, you know. I'm trying to think where I was going with all this. So, I mean, this is kind of how I've got to this story. I mean, it's just so massive, you know. And I have got no intentions to harm any of these people in any way at all. I could give you the names right now. You know, I could say to you, well, it was this person, that person, that person. I didn't want just one or two. It was a freaking ton of them. You know, and they, they all just did things so bad. So bad. And why did they do it? I actually, I met a guy. He was an ex-MP. So an ex-member of that, that freaking government. And he lives in France. And he left this country. And the reason he's in France is because he became a whistleblower for this stuff that I'm actually talking about. You know, educating people on what the government's doing. They're selling your children. They're selling your children. They're putting them up for adoption to people with the highest bid. They're marketing, they're trafficking children. That's what they're doing. They're trafficking your children. And once once they get the child in their care, they, they just blame anything on you. They, they, they make up stuff that ain't even real. And they just stick it there. And if they, they win in the court and you lose, say goodbye to your child. Because that's it, they're gone. And that's what it's all about. When, when, when this kind of thing happens. Because they want to get rid of your child. Because they're selling them. To rich people, obviously. And to people who, haven't, who can't have kids. They're selling them. Yeah, they're not going to like that I'm saying this. Why do you think they put a gag on me? Why do you think my name isn't my name anymore? Well, I don't hate these people. This is the thing. I mean, back then, back then, oh, there was so much I wanted to do to these people. You know, back then. And this is what you're hearing now. This is that because if you can hear anger in me, well, this is just because I'm I'm in that moment. You can imagine that. Or for me to talk about this, then somehow I've gone back in time to where that memory is. And, and that's kind of what you're hearing. You're not hearing who I am now. You're hearing me. Well, you could, you both. You're hearing me, part of me now. And then you're hearing the majority of me back there to access these kind of things. <laughs> I haven't got a bad bone in me that wants to do any harm to these people. I don't care about the government. And I don't, I, I've got no wish to bring them down to their freaking knees. I've got no, no need for that. You know, but I'll tell you what I have got. For them to take responsibility for what they do. And I mean, this is a time when Tony Blair was about, right? So, and this is how it rolls with them, rolls with them, right? So if this happened when Tony Blair was in power, then whoever's in power, Theresa May, oh, She's not responsible. Why? Because she weren't the party there. Bullshit. And why do I say bullshit? Because they're all under one umbrella called government. And that's why I'm using the word government. You don't get out of this. If, if you want to go and get elected as a party, then you need to take responsibility for that word, government. And anything that's ever gone down under that word, government. You, d you don't get out of it by saying, well, it wasn't our department, it was that department. It wasn't us, it was them. No, it was all of you. You're all under the one umbrella. And this is why you hear me say, the government don't work. It does not work. It does not serve its people. It does not help them. And that's what government was supposed to mean. It's supposed to be there to serve people and make their lives better not tear them apart, not take away their children and then go try and sell them to the highest bidder. Can you see what I mean? Can you see why it doesn't work? And this still goes on today. There's still court cases going on in the World Courts of Justice. And, and it don't mean nothing to anybody when you haven't experienced it. Right? Tell me if I'm wrong. 
it doesn't mean anything as long as it hasn't, it hasn't happened to you. But as I learned, you just never know. It could happen to you. You could be the next one. And if we don't take responsibility for that, then who the hell is going to? And if no one does, what, what does that mean? It means they're allowed to continue going doing what they want. What they want. That's not acceptable. Not in my world. That's not acceptable. They don't have power. That's pseudo power. Presumed power. It's not power. If, if you want to, if you want to put any kind of power on it, it's tyranny. That's what that is. That's tyranny. Going into innocent people's lives and taking their children just so you can make money. And here's another thing. And I found this out from the the MP, the ex MP guy, one of their own people, the whistleblower guy, is. Every year, the government gives each borough X amount of millions. And here's the deal. They've got to spend all that. They've got to get, you know, they've got to get rid of all that. Because if they do, then they'll get more the next time. So what, how do they have to do that? They have to go out and get their children. Is this, is this, if it hasn't happened to you, ask yourself, is this acceptable? Just ask yourself, is it acceptable? Because I know if it had happened to you, you would say this is outrageous. And you wouldn't stand for it. And this happened in 2005, you know, from 2003. 2005, a long time ago, and I weren't allowed to say nothing. But I'll tell you, tell you one thing: if um, the things I know today, that gag would have meant nothing. Would have meant nothing. And to anybody out there who's got a gag on, <clears throat> it's only you, you've only got a gag on you if you accept that. It's not real, my friend. This is not acceptable. This is not an acceptable way to behave as humans. The government has no right to, to the whole Brexit thing. Though. I ain't freaking, I don't even go into that, whatever that is all about. But they're obviously, there's something going on there, right? So they're blaming, the government's blaming somebody else for something. What gives them the right? What gives them the right to blame another country for something? when they're not even taking care of their own country. Instead, they're robbing its own country. And back then, I didn't learn this was just happening in the UK. Oh no, this isn't just happening in the UK. This is going on in many countries across the bleeding planet. I watched my first daughter die, and then I watched them destroy my second daughter. And I had to find a place in me. I had to work on me. You know, if, if you've seen the book cover, you would see that I, I gained 18 stone. I, I totally just didn't look like me anymore. Actually, how I look now is how I look before that. You know, I mean, I look actually older in that that the photo when I was actually younger. That's how bad it. It destroyed, you know. But that—that's me. That I have to take responsibility for that because all of this that went on, it turned me very negative in my own mind, you know. And that's why I gained that in stone. So I had to, I had to stop fighting the people out there. I had to stop fighting other people, and I had to start fighting myself. And I had to go within myself and start fixing me. Because before I'm, I'm ever going to do anything outside, I have to make sure here was taken care of, you know. And that's what I've been doing ever since. But I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm still caught up in, in their system, still. And that's this one. This is the, <clears throat> the universal credit. Because my company can't sustain my house, can't sustain my living, so I needed help. And that was him. 
that they think they can just roll me any way they want. Well, that, that's over. And I don't care. I don't care what happens to me come a month's time. I really don't care. I don't care if they take this house or back anymore. Because I'm not staying, I'm not, I'm not putting up with this kind of behaviour from the government who is there to support the people. It is us, the people, who put these people in that seat, right? So we have to take a bit of responsibility here too. We can't just say, well, it's them, it's their fault. No, we actually put them there. We put them there. So if we put them there, we can also have the right to say whether this is right or this is wrong. Whoa, hold up, what's going on? These people do not have power. And anybody who believes they do, you're wrong. You're wrong. Power exists within each of us individually. It doesn't belong to no one outside. No one has the right to tell you who you are, what you should think, what you should do, or any of that. No one. No one has that right. <clears throat> Can you imagine just for a minute? 2005, wait, it was 2003, and then taking my daughter away, and there I am, powerless, can't do a thing, can't do a thing. And go back a little bit further, there, there was my other, my first daughter, she's in the hands of these doctors trying to save her life. What could I do? I was powerless, totally powerless from it. And then it happened with my second daughter. No. That will never happen again. Never happen again. I've never... To look back now, I can see how blind I was to put my faith and trust in these people. No. No. You don't have that. You don't have that power. And I hope anybody that's listening to this, see this, see that they are the power. They are the ones, you know, you are the ones. No one tells you what to do. No one tells you anything. You decide what you want to do. You know? And as long as you're not hurting that one, then it doesn't matter. As long as you're just being you or helping others, then that's great. But if you're not, I mean, if you're hurting people, then it's your own doing, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not trying to bring these people down, but I am not going to hide this story anymore. They need to take responsibility for their actions, and that does mean you, Theresa May, because you're the one that's in power right now. And I don't care whether it was Tony Blair back there or not. You're there now. You're the one under that big umbrella, government, and anything that goes down in the government's umbrella is responsible for that. And, that, and as you're, you're supposed to be its leader, then you are the one responsible. And here's what I'm asking you to, to consider now, is take that responsibility and then think about doing something to change it. Change it. Stop being arrogant and up your asses. Change it. Because how would you feel? Now I'm addressing you now, Theresa May. How would you feel? You're not you're not Prime Minister at the moment. You're just a normal person out there. And you've got some children and then the government Tony Blair, let's say Tony Blair, right? He comes in and decides, hmm, I like her children, yeah, we, we can we can sell those, can't we? And then they take your kids and they, they say all these things about you. How would you feel at this point? Would you would you be okay? Oh yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. I'll be Prime Minister later on, so you know, I'll get them back then. Yeah, right. Just put yourselves in that position for a second. Forget Brexit. Forget it. Does not matter. Does not matter. Fix the things in this country first before you start on some other country. Fix the things that you do as a government before you start hammering on at some other government or country or whatever. 
think about the things you're doing and then fix that because sooner or later these people are all going to have enough here's me I'm not taking your bullshit anymore you don't have this right and I do not give it you could come to me with well could you sign this no I ain't signing nothing of yours those days are over I don't agree with anything you do right now I came to you in November and I asked you for help and I didn't get it and all you kept doing was pushing me pushing me I was facing losing this home like I've already said and all the other things that you kept doing and you kept taking taking more and it's like what I have got right now I'm barely surviving and what am I doing let me let me show you for a minute um right there. <clears throat> Show you what I'm doing because you keep taking every single month. I get so close before you know I can. I'm, I'm okay to buy food again. I have to keep freaking selling my musical stuff. Look, I have to keep selling them to cash converters of all places. No disrespect to them, they've helped me. And why am I doing this? I've never had to do this before. Why am I doing this? Look. This one is the last one I've got. And how long is it before, you know, this is going to happen again? And this is all because I came to you for support and I asked you for help. I've not hidden nothing to you. You know about Folk Octave and all of that. You know about the company I've got. You know everything. And I've not hidden one thing from you. And I've asked you for help. And you haven't given it. You have not given it. Instead, you've kept taking more money. Keep taking it away. And you've been trying to push me and push me and push me. Even just, just the other day when, when all of this was coming out, I was thinking, this is why you're pushing me. You want me to tell everybody. You want me to tell everybody what you did. Now, I'm not going to say these, the people's names, you know. Anyone you can know is Justice McFarlane. You know, it's anyone you can know because he was a judge on the High Court. I'm not going to give you the names of the people who actually did this, who made that uh, those error calls. I'm not going to. I'm not going to bring up them people. No, because I'm seeing this as one one body, government. That's for who's responsible right now. And you need to take responsibility because I'm not playing your game. I'm not playing your rules or anything. Now, if you want to keep taking, you've been doing it, so you might as well keep keep going that way. If that's what you're going to do, just do that. If that's what you're going to do, I even told your person this site just here. I told them because you have to document. Like, if I'm looking for a job, I've already told you. I've already told you I've got this company and I'm trying to do that, but you've tried to keep me so far away from that, you know, and every time you kept doing something, what people weren't realising is when I was throwing out a video out there, it's because of the pressure you was putting me under, which is a good good thing, it's because it made me come out, that's good, that's really good, so I'll give you a round of applause on that one. But this, I mean... I even said to the lady, just on the 14th, look at, this, look at the top of this website. We have placed cookies on your computer or other devices to make this website better. Yeah, rubbish. But let me tell you, yeah, because you've just gone and put another cookie right on my computer just because I opened this page. And like I said to the woman, I ain't going to be logging in there no more. But every time I close this browser, your cookie is deleted. Because I don't accept this. I don't accept this. You don't have the right to put anything on my computer. It's my computer, not yours. So if this is if this is how you think you can control people and, 
and spy on people or whatever it is you think you're, think you're doing, then good luck. Because people are going to cotton on to all of this stuff and they're going to say, I don't accept that. Then what are you going to do? No one's going to have any faith in you no more. No one's going to have faith in you. You need to change what it is you're doing. You need to start being for there for people. And that means not a certain class of people. That means everyone. Because you can't put people in classes. I'll tell you what class you can put them in. Human being. And that's everybody. You can't say black, white or any of that. Because they're all human beings. And you need to start thinking that way. And stop categorising people. And separating them. Dividing them. And playing them on to each other. You've got to stop that. Because people are going to wake up. And if you ain't realising this yet, then you need to wake up. Now I'm being honest with everybody that's, that's going to say this. I'm not hiding none of this for, for, for your sake anymore, or anybody's. You know, you need to change it. Maybe I'm repeating the same thing over and over again, I don't know. But Like I say, I'm selling my story. I'm selling it. But I don't want the money. Can I tell you who's going to have the money? My daughter. My daughter. She's the one that deserves it. She's the one that had to go through all this. Forget me. Forget my wife. It's my daughter. I haven't seen her in years because of this. I don't even know where she is. I'm still not bitter about you. That's the thing. I'm not bitter about you. I don't want to be one of those people who, who something tragic happens to them and then like, that's it, revenge, you know, and go out there and whatever, you know. I'm, I don't want to be one of those kind of people because that's where it never works and it never changes. It does a circle. It goes round and round and round. Fighting fire with fire, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I'm not going to fight you anymore. I'm not going to fight you. So if you want to, you know everything now. Because I'm telling you things right now that I never even told you on the 14th, you know. You just kind of met a barrier with me. You weren't listening to you no more. You don't have the power anymore. That's what you realised that day. I'm happy for you to continue in your little, whatever you want to call it, up in London. You can continue there. But freaking start doing things right. Start doing things for people that live in this country and also being nice to other countries in a better way. And stop blaming everybody else. And, and actually take responsibility for the media at the same time. Because you're allowing them to do what they do. To talk rubbish. To spread the news that ain't even news, that ain't even real. Take responsibility for that as well. Do you want to make a law? Make a law on them. Speak the truth, be honest, be transparent, and they actually put the law back on yourself as well. Speak the truth, be honest, be transparent. Treat people how you wish to be treated. Because as long as you're treating people badly, then what you're saying is for those people to treat you badly. Because that's what you're saying. You need to wake up and smell the coffee. It's time to evolve and time to change. And I don't mean something that's going to take X amount of years because of the you know, red tape and all of this. Fuck the red tape. Just change. Just become human. Stop com coming on the news or whatever it is you do and giving big speeches to the people and then taking forever to do that and maybe never even get there. Just freaking do it. People are getting tired. They're tired. 
Again, there's plenty of people who are just fast asleep because they're watching TV all the time. And we all know what that does, don't we? Keeps them occupied, it keeps them under control. As long as they're watching the TV, they're reacting. Don't they? That's what they're doing. If they're going to react, at least let them react in a different way, a positive way, and actually see what you're doing. Change government, change, it's time to change. It's time to take responsibility. I've taken responsibility for everything I've ever done. By working on me, I did that. You know, because I could be that person who's going out buying a gun or something and coming on your doorstep. I could be one of those people, couldn't I? I'm not. I took responsibility for me. And there are many people, and I've heard these people before, you know, like someone does something terrible to your daughter or your son, and all that. So I wouldn't I would let that happen, or you know, I'd go and kill them or something like that. Bullshit. You really don't know unless you're put in these kind of situations. And if anybody ever did do that, well, stupid them. Stupid them. Because they played right into their hands. So I've taken responsibility for my life. You know? Now I want you to take responsibility for yours and what you do as a government. Because the way I can see your future is it won't be there no more. People get tired. They won't, they won't want to listen. They, they won't fight you. They won't come and drag you out there and put them in them some freaking hold on it. No, they just start to ignore you like I am. They just ignore you. And when no one's reacting to what you're doing and what you're saying, they all start laughing at you, smiling at you. What are you going to do then? No one's listening. You need to change. Change. And for the record, I don't care what you do from now on. I don't care if I lose this place. I don't care about any of it. I'm doing what's right. Not only for myself, but for anybody else that's going through this too. Or anybody that ever went through the stuff before. And I hope that those people who are going through this don't do anything silly. Actually can take some inspiration from me. You know, I've had to carry my daughter in my, in my arms to her grave. And then I had to watch you people do what you did to my second daughter. You know, but here I am. And I'm, I do not want to take you down. I do not want to do that. Because that's not part of who I am, you know. I just want you to change before you get before you get faded out. Because that's what will happen to you. You'll just be faded out. I don't want to listen anymore. You know, even the people in, in who work under your freaking governments. You know, I, <clears throat> meeting these people... I've never seen so many people who didn't like what they was doing, so unhappy about what they was doing to people. I've never seen so many. I went into the, the GP, right? Not happy. Not happy. What isn't he happy about? What you are making him do? The laws that you have implied on him that he must be a, a certain way when he knows. He's not asleep. I mean, he's just so not asleep. He's very much awake. But he's stuck under your stupid rules. You're living in, under the Darwinian rubbish. The schools. You're teaching them stuff that ain't even real. That don't make no sense. You need to change all of it. And like I say, that time for you saying, oh, it's going to take a few years to implement all this stuff. No, rubbish. Rubbish. If I can choose to change, then so can you. So can you. And then I can look at you and say, yeah, there, there goes a decent human being doing what's right by other human beings. That's what I, I would look at and see. That's what I would see. You know, whenever I'm on, on one of these websites and I, and 
I see something from your government or Theresa May doing some freaking talk or something like that. I'm thinking, what a farce. What a farce all of this is. Come on. How does it feel to, to do actually one of those interviews knowing that everybody can see that it's just a farce? It's just a farce. How does that feel? That people don't believe in what you do. I could go on like this forever. Do you know that? If I'm getting through to you, then great. You need to do something. You need to start changing. At least start by admitting you need to change this. At least start there and taking responsibility. You don't get to know the, the laws of the universe and then think, you know, it's okay to do the things you're doing. And if you, as a government, don't understand the laws of the universe, then wow, are you in for a wake-up call? Are you in for a wake-up call? You need to evolve, and you need to evolve fast. I'm not into protests, none of it, none of it. Just someone, someone the other day kind of went on to one of the videos that I've got on there, and that was the one on the, the media. And I, I sense this person thought that I'm, I'm here to attack the government or the media. No, you've got this wrong. I'm just bringing this subject to up, up, so that it's, it's lit up. So, that, so now that we can address it. We can address this. Because if it isn't up there for everybody to see, including the story just now, if this is nothing here, there is no light on it. And we can't resolve these things. This story, this one, because I mean, if you read up here, I don't, I don't like anybody to realise whether any of the stories that I've written about in my books, whether they're fiction or non-fiction. I want you to decide that kind of thing. But this one, this one, well, we know, don't we, government? We know this one's damn real. Let's go a little bit further with this. It's so real uh, to destroy one little child. All of those people that were involved in that court case, there was a total of millions were being paid out to these people involved, right? Remember? Millions of the money from the taxpayers of this country were paying these people to destroy a young girl. And this is just one family. So how many more? Can you see there's something wrong here? How many more? Since when does a government do stuff like this? It can't be a human government. So you tell me. When she reached 18, Judge McFarlane said she was entitled to millions what you did but then again you just not long after that court case you came in and made sure she was totally destroyed she ended up in a men she ended up in the priory of all places you know where the celebrities go to she ended up there you did a right number on that you did a right number on all of this because I actually I bet that, that guardian that I spoke about earlier, you know, it was a few years ago now, I kind of went back to my hometown. I just happened to see her on the bus. I've never seen such a wreck in all my life. There was this woman getting millions from for, for all of this, you know, being paid really well. You know, she was going off sunny in it, you know, lovely, lovely, lovely town she had, because she was giving all of these holidays, you know, because of what she does. Now then there she was on this bus, she didn't even recognise me because I was no longer this big 18 stone guy, I was this guy. And I was looking and I was thinking, 
Wow, how the mighty have fallen. And I pitied them. I pitied them. That's enough for today. I hope you think about it. I hope you wake up and smell the coffee.